Give us your name. Give us your name. Jeremy and I have just been released from the Williamson County Jail. Yesterday around 5 p.m. we were both arrested uh, for similar charges but on different days. Um, I was arrested for allegations about my misconduct or allegations of misconduct at the school board meeting this past Tuesday on September 14th. Yeah, my name is Jeremy Story, and we, we really feel like we were unlawfully arrested for a lot of reasons which are going to be uh, coming out soon. As a mother and a parent, I'm shocked. Three months, that's how long a temporary restraining order has been in place naming this man, our superintendent, as a clear and present danger to a woman. People knew about this and hid it. I want you to know, we drove down here from Grapevine today because we wanted to be here. I've been watching what's been going on in Round Rock, and it has been shameful. Does the board condone this kind of behavior? It doesn't look like you condemn it. What else are you covering up? Amid stories across the state and nation of rogue and corrupt school administration, Central Texans are experiencing and exposing a similar mess in their local school district. This is episode two of Exposing Round Rock ISD by Texas Scorecard. While the two district dads, a minister and former U.S. military captain, dealt with the school district order to arrest and brief imprisonment, Round Rock ISD Superintendent Hafed Azaiz and five of the school board members also planned to retaliate against their two colleagues after the September meeting incident. A brief introduction to some of those five members, dubbed the, quote, Bad Faith Five by a group of parent activists, include recently elected Tiffany Harrison and Dr. Jun Xiao, Amber Feller, Corey Vesa, and Board President Amy Weir. Ironically, Trustee Harrison, who voted to keep the public out of the September meeting, stated on her campaign website that one of her top priorities was transparency to the public. Now, additionally, according to campaign finance records, Harrison is notably supported by far-left Democrat state rep James Tallarico and Joyce James, a controversial teacher of racist ideologies at the Austin Police Department. Now, trustee Jun Xiao, meanwhile, recently had a noteworthy email exchange with a district parent over the September incident. Xiao, responding to the parent's detailed concerns that the board was unduly prohibiting access for citizens, simply said public meetings were not, quote, theater shows. Quote, board meeting is to get business done, not a theater show. You can enjoy a packed party with your maskless friends privately. Jun. Another snapshot of the members is trustee and board vice president Feller, who has already demonstrated questionable behavior while in power. In the fall of 2019, while her son was taking the SAT at a district high school, Feller was accused of trying to quote-unquote intimidate or seek special favors from the college board test administrator. The administrator filed a grievance against the trustee, though the Round Rock ISD board rejected it reportedly because they did not have the power to enforce the requested relief. Notably, Feller also works for a counseling organization called Blue Bonnet Trails Community Services. And just a few months after she got elected in 2018, the Round Rock ISD board gave Feller's organization a taxpayer-funded contract for new mental health services at district schools. However, those five current board members, despite their individual behaviors, have the recent controversial actions in common. They all voted to hire Superintendent Azaiz, all voted to keep the public out of the recent public meeting, and all face questions of covering up the superintendent's assault allegations. In the days after the September incident, Round Rock ISD board president Amy Weir and the quote, Bad Faith Five members planned a resolution to formally censor their colleagues, Weston and Bone, for challenging their arbitrary meeting restrictions. Trustee Weston described the censure. About a week after we left, we, were, we received these vicious censure resolutions from the other five. And for most people, you think a censure resolution is just a slap on the wrist. And initially, that's what we thought. But soon it became clear that there were objectives, punitive objectives in these resolutions to try to force us to resign out of humiliation. And these resolutions sought to prevent us from even stepping foot on school district property 
in our capacities as trustees, that we would need the permission of these other trustees to even be on district property to do our jobs. I mean, this is very offensive because what it really speaks to is it undermines the outcome of our elections. Well, ultimately, I don't know how this is gonna end, but I believe that there is a statewide impact here because we are two vocal conservative school board members who are unapologetically and relentlessly advocating for parental rights, the rule of law, and open government. And we believe that this is worth us paying a significant price emotionally, financially, to our reputations, because we believe in these principles. And it's our belief that there are others around the state who believe that these things are worth fighting for just as we do. The board was set to censor them at a late September meeting, but at the last minute, a district court judge intervened and stopped their plan, issuing a temporary restraining order against the board. On top of that, citizens acted. Two district parents emailed several state officials and asked them to prosecute the superintendent in, quote, bad faith five. Quote, five of our seven Round Rock ISD school board trustees are abusing their authority in what they deem as safety protocols for the actual purpose of denying the public their legal right to attend their own public school board meetings, wrote April and Justin Brinson in an email to the Texas Rangers, Williamson County Attorney, and Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton. Citizens also sued. Quote, news, the Round Rock ISD board's, quote, bad faith five members who have violated open meetings laws, wrongfully arrested parents, engaged in illegal content-based public speech censorship, and attempted an unlawful censure against the two best trustees have been sued in Williamson County Court Thursday for approving an illegal property tax increase, posted Don Zimmerman, who filed the lawsuit. Zimmerman is a former Austin City Council member and current executive director of the Travis County Taxpayers Union. And meanwhile, in that same month, the Texas Education Agency also flagged Superintendent Azaiz's license and told him he was under investigation for criminal allegations. In October, Superintendent Azaiz, despite the backlash from citizens, announced he and the district would again restrict the number of seats at an upcoming board meeting, which sparked even more parents, taxpayers, and community organizations to rally. On the evening of October 21st, citizens gathered and hosted a press conference outside Round Rock High School before the board meeting. Speakers included the two fathers arrested after the September meeting, Dustin Clark and Jeremy Story. We just want to exercise our parental rights and our rights to be inside and uh, participate in an open public meeting. And right now, the superintendent intends to restrict the number of seats in this meeting just like he did last month and the month before when there is no reason to do it. The Texas Open Meetings Act requires complete access for parents to any school board meeting and we're being denied that. There is no other gathering or event in this school district that is required to have a seating capacity or a limit on the number of people that are able to be in that event or that gathering. Last month on September 14th, I was escorted out by police for interrupting the meeting because they were keeping the public out. If anybody is terrorizing this community, it is these school board members who think that they can tell us that we can't be inside of a meeting. There's no other government meeting in this county or courtroom that is restricting the number of people that can be inside of a, of a, of a room. So why is it only happening here? So they're, they're not just talking about distancing, they're talking about government approved chairs and weird stuff like that. This is simply not a part of the Texas Open Meetings Act. District High School student Emma Ray and Michelle Evans of Williamson County Moms for Liberty were also among the speakers. I actually didn't know this type of thing could happen um, in my district, especially, uh, but being here and uh, witnessing the events, I'm actually in awe. This doesn't make sense to me, and it actually it puts me in a state of shock to know that I am residing in this district and I still have um, this year and next year left in this uh, high school, um, knowing that these are the decisions that are being put in place that could directly harm me and the people that I care about. Over the last several months, this board and the administration have become increasingly insular in an attempt to shield themselves from criticism. They have created on-the-fly, self-serving policies and have abused their power to try to bully outspoken parents into submission. But lawlessness in this district will no longer be tolerated. 
we are calling for a return of common sense and for the board to respect the inherent rights of parents and children in this district. The administration and trustees have an opportunity to end the adversarial environment they have single-handedly created through their authoritarian tactics and blatant disdain for the rule of law. Was Azayiz going to again block parents from the public meeting? And what of the accusations against him? Exposed is a production of Texas Scorecard. If you like this content, please go to texasscorecard.com. Please also rate and review this podcast on whatever podcasting platform you listen on. This episode was produced by Drew Cook, directed by Jacob Asmussen, lead audio production by Ariana Silva, and production assistance by Luke Marshall.